Hello. All right, so I had a ton of people, um, and like if I took their body weights, it would be an actual ton of people mentioning and talking about. You stopped in the glove video in the middle. I did because I just turned the camera on while I was working, so I have another glove to do. So yesterday you saw sculpting a glove part two two point five. Today is glove sculpting part one. If that makes any sense. I'm starting with a fresh box of clay on a fresh armature. Hello, Michael J. Lasser. Okay, and I'm going to put myself a little more light over here like I did yesterday. Just got home. What did I miss? Uh, I just started. I just started. Once again, it's chilly in the swap shop, shop, so I'm wearing a sweater. Probably enough clay to do an arm. I already have an arm over there that I sculpted the other day, yesterday. My armature for this is a piece of pipe, a floor flange. This is half inch pipe and a floor flange is what this is. And uh, the floor flange is screwed to the board, and there's a pipe. It's, it's a 10 inch or 10 inch pipe. Already threaded pipe from Home Depot. Bought it today. I think this was like $5, maybe $6 total. That's not as fancy. I have to play here. Actually, I have a lump of clay here. I'm just going to do this number. There we go. Now we're started. I'm going to have a yardstick to tell me things. Like, the bend in my elbow is the furthest a glove can go. And that is nine and a half, ten inches or so to the hand. So I want to go up to here with clay. That's just going to be wrist. Any action on the uh, post, yes. honey? Um. My wife is reading comments, and Stacy is over there sewing like a mad woman. What's the bust? It's Jordan. I believe I'm a 54. Okay. Uh, what's the uh, sculpture? This is this is the same hunchback as yesterday. Or you were on yesterday. You saw this. Hunchback. Blah, 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 blah. Then the head looks familiar. Well, I made it up. All right, so I don't need all this for wrists. So I'm just going to pile it on top. And I have to see, that is a right hand, this is a left hand. So, now the left hand isn't going to be exactly a glove. I'm going to be doing a, uh, I'm going to do it closed so I can make him holding a dead cat.
And every time they described Boo Radley, they said that he would strangle cats and keep them in his pocket. No. No. Plus, you'd never get him to lay still long enough to get moldy. See? Cat in his left hand. He's holding a cat. That's for Dick's popular outside. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? I don't want a baby instead. <laughs> Can you paint this like a clown? <laughs> a clown baby? A horrible, horrible clown baby? Alright, so I am, I'm just sculpting. Now, now we're at the part where it's easy-ish. Wait a minute. How do you know about Carl's water buffalo? <laughs> when every now and then on Carl's jumpsuit, the zipper would go down too far, <laughs> and I would be a little afraid that the water buffalo would come out. <laughs> so that was Carl's euphemism for bits people ought not to see. But I don't know how Michael Lassiter knew that. What did I say? Oh, I already hit the thing where it said this is not for kids. <laughs> the zipper was broken. I bought that suit at a yard sale. Oh, if I said that, I would get so I didn't, scolded. I didn't say anything. I implied it. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. To quote Nathan Fillion, the water buffalo is my penis. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Things I can't understand. Stop. <laughs> to paraphrase, I see it's still cold there, hence you had your cable knit on. Yes, I like my cable knit. It is a good sweater. I'm a, I prefer sweaters to hoodies. So at 10 inches, let's say, nine and a half, ten inches. I, all I have right now are crotch jokes, so I'm just welcome. Gonna let that run out. You started it, and that's now what is. Technically, busy. Michael Lasseter started it. I'm just gonna let this go. You're not gonna read out. me the funny crotch jokes? Until somebody comes. Sure. Let's see. Boo Radley and Atticus peeing off the porch. Uh, he beard is somewhere. Uh, the water buffalo is known as the Black Death. Put the horse back in the barn. Yeah, you got to watch for no, no, those issues. No. Your pod bay doors are open. Yeah, no. close That's your pod bay doors, now. dude. I don't even think Cheney is the goodest boy. He's the goodest boy who's in my lap, right? Well, that's true. <laughs> of all the ones in your lap, he is the goodest. Stacy is petting the puppies. Are you saying that Morris is the goodest boy? Uh, he's pretty good. He, pretty good. <laughs> he didn't take off a whole bag of pumpkin teeth to chew on. <laughs> yes. Like Cheney did. This is the wrist, and I'm just making a wrist, you know. Oh, no. Uh, honey, oh. help me out over here, would you? Oh, gosh. Baby, of course. <laughs> I was like, I forgot how this, the, the door works. It's just more fun to be inside. <laughs> this is cold out there.
Wait, Carl talked about the water buffalo on Dark Hours YouTube? Are you kidding me? I never know what I do. He wasn't there. I get reports. <laughs> right hand. This is a left hand. So I'm looking at it. This is a good palm. And I'm just, I'm sizing it this way. I'm holding it up to me here. I've also got a set of calipers over there that I might size it. Here's a little bleach. I use the sanitizer. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's go outside. Come on. Can you go outside? Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. 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 Not anymore after that explanation. <laughs> right hand, left hand. And let's just make a decision. This is the palm. All right. So give him a thumb here. And this, this is it, guys. I mean, it's really this simple. What's that? I'm just thinking procedurally, maybe I should have done this bit first and then put the side bits on. That might have been smart. Are the side bits already on? Yeah. Of course. Because of course they are. Well. I think fingers are cool. I'm going to give them fingers. My hand would fit in there. Yeah, I think I can see it. And remember, I'm going to move this one around a bit because he's holding something. Because this is a dead hand. Uh, this hand is actually going to be in the costume working the head. So this is going to be a dummy hand. So it's really not that important that my fingers fit in this. However, you know. I do want to do it like I did it yesterday, pretty much. And then I'm going to affect a curl on the hand. Now I have a pinky coming. And that is like this stubby little hand that I am making. This is its basis. I'm looking at my hand here, and I got a lot of meat right there for my thumb. So I'm going to throw some meat on for the thumb. Chaney, Chaney, Chaney. What's up, buddy? A little more meat over here on the heel of this hand. So I'll put that on. Can you can. I normally do not, because once you mold it, it's got little plaster chunks and things in it. So I normally don't. Yeah, exactly. And again, here is this hand is going to be in a closed fist position because it's a dummy hand and it's carrying stuff. 
I would continue sculpting with the hand open if this were a glove. What do you use for the eyes? Um, well, okay, so in this sculpture right now, in this sculpture is a... Uh, That's a Christmas ornament, and the other eye is a ping pong ball. I wanted his eyes different sizes. But I have a whole drawer full of eyeball forms that I use for different things. Now I'm going to work back here to make sure that the back of the hand looks okay. I think I want big knuckles on him, you know? So that's getting into a fist shape. Oh, is Bill on? Um, I don't see him. Maybe he is. Later, I'll show you guys the eyeball drawer. Yep, he's there. Are you Got on a, YouTube or Facebook? I'm on the YouTube. The YouTubes. This is my main carry hole right here. So I want to make sure that's kind of open so I can get a cattail through there. I'm joining in late. Apologies. Please fill me in on exactly what has happened. Uh, there was a, this is a board and I put a pipe on it and now I'm sculpting a fist onto that. Really is only that exciting. There we go. That'll be a more natural hand position. Who was it last year who used to count down transport for you? Tim. Tim is around. I'm sure he's counting down Transworld somewhere. I don't know if he's online right now or not. I'm spinning it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm fixing the profile, and I'm fixing the profile. It's kind of the main thing that I'm doing right now. The hole going through all the fingers? Uh, yes. Uh, there won't be a hole going through all the fingers. There will be enough of a hole to cut out here. Remember, this will be latex. And enough of a hole to cut out there. And that way I can run a uh, cattail through it. Do you find hands hard to sculpt or draw? I do. Uh, I find them hard to draw. I don't find them hard to sculpt. I just look at my hand and make it look like that. You know, so right now I'm, I'm in this phase right here. I'm okay with this. I, I think I'm looking pretty good. I wish this were a little tighter so I can bring this down a little tighter. There we go. That's natural. Now I feel good. Remind me what is Quasimodo for? Uh, this is a costume that I'm taking to Transworld to sell. Hands are a pain to draw. Uh, hands are kind of tough to draw, but a lot of facets to a hand. I don't see the humor in this eyeball torture method. You are all sick individuals, and I'm sorry you are this way. Is that Bill? <laughs> I figured. 
Oh, Bill. Bill, I didn't start at this time. Yeah, the proportions are uh, important on a hand. So just getting the finger lengths correct is a, it's kind of a big deal. See, now I'm putting in some bone structure on the back of that hand, like I have on the other hand. Sadly, I draw better than I sculpt. How often do you sculpt? But this guy is actually going pretty fast. A little more light on him. And I want to have all these guys ready for molding so I can get them molded uh, before the end of the weekend. Have you ever sculpted a wood dowel in the fist, then remove it so you would have a hole? I don't want a hole. A hole would make it much harder to mold. But have you ever done that? I have not done it because that would make my job harder. Every so. once in a while, that never keep it, never looks right. Sculpting. How often do you sculpt? You should practice more. With, with practice, with great practice comes great Responsibility. Are you um, doing knuckles on the bit fingers too? I will, yes. How are your bugs coming? Um, I don't know which bugs you mean, Jordan. Is that the bugs that I am doing with the RC mouth parts? They're on a bit of a stall right now as I develop other projects. Okay, that's good. Again, I'm constantly checking this anatomy against my anatomy. I, you know, I have a hand right here. I don't need visual reference per se on that because I, I have visual reference in the palm of my hand. Repetition equals skill, you are right. Yes. Yeah, something about it takes at least nine hours to be a master. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. Well, that is remarkably easier than you think. It's impressive how quickly the hand took shape. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed too. I am very surprised at how fast this is going. I am, I'm already smoothing and shaping. Uh, I'm gonna bring it around here. I'm gonna put in some tendons in the wrist. Um, now the tendons and the wrist on the other one were to make the latex accordion in that spot. Instead, now on this wrist, these tendons are just to match the other wrist. So I took those away and now I can pare down. I know you like to get multiple characters out of the mask. What else are you going to use the Quasimodo mask for? Well. Um, and not necessarily this mask, but I was thinking about doing this, this costuming wig in other ways, you know? I think it might be cool to do this guy as a, uh, as a janitor. Same, same head, same puppet mechanism, but uh, in his one hand is that bag of garbage, this constantly closed hand, and his other hand he has a garbage picker. And I think that would be a fun Q-Line character. You know, uh, I think there's there's a lot of options with this. Did you ever end up making a mask out of the last mold you posted a video? The, 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 the answer is yes. And it was the Grouch. Oh, that's right. I think that's the last mold I aired publicly. going to use a little 
cutoff tool here, clean up the bottom of this a little. And I'm already at a point where I'm, I'm in the smoothing process. I'm now taking this and I'm making it more attractive. It's got a lot of rough lines on it. Uh, I'm going to take a brush and some water. This is not the right brush. Stacy? Yes, sir. You were probably too young to know like new kids on the block, right? They were before uh, your time. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> but but they weren't like popular when you were in school. No. They were all old by the time you were in, in my school. mid thirties in the solid instinct backstreet boys era. Right. <laughs> yeah, you were in the backstreet boys. Yeah. And that the right stuff song popped into my head when I said the right brush. So that's how my brain works. Reminds me of zombie and plants versus zombies. I just got back from the thrift store. I scored big on bells tonight. Sweet. Who was that? Uh, cobwebs and candlesticks. Yeah, belts are one of the things that I buy all the time in thrift stores. A lot of times, man, they get some cool buckles. Owner of a haunt I used to work at had a character that went around cleaning up while interacting with customers. Called the character Candy Amy. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great way to do it. What's happening? Okay. My puppies are in the room behind me, and I cannot see them. And that is probably best. Any suggestions on what to start out with for a haunted house? Uh, a large fortune because the best way to make a small fortune in the haunted house business is to start with a large fortune. Um, it, it depends on what kind of haunted attraction you want to do. Uh, are you doing a haunted trail? Are you doing a, uh, you know, are you doing a, an indoor warehouse show? Are you doing a tent show in a parking lot somewhere? Um, If I were doing my own, you know, that would be different than, you know, and I think I would want to do like an outdoor trail. I think there's a very nice um, monetary input and reward there happening. Say hello to Big Dog. Hello, Big Dog. How are that you is, doing, sir? That is a big hand or arm you are sculpting there. Have you sculpted any Clive Barker type monsters? Uh, yes, I have. I actually won a design contest as a wee youngster to design a Cinnabite. I think it was like for Gorezone Magazine, one of those. And my Cinnabite was, uh, he was a thief when he was alive. And he has this belt of hands. And he could pull a hand off and throw it on the ground that it would run out and do his bidding. And all his, you know, when, when you were just looking at him, all the hands, were, all the fingers were wiggling and stuff on the hand. So, good times. But yeah, I, I, I really like Clive Barker's work. It's very different. It's very visionary. A lot of neat stuff happening with Clive Barker things. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, he is, he is not afraid of the androgynous, uh, and that has an element to it, you know? Clive Barker is freaking nuts. He bought the house and invaded the art gallery. Have you ever heard of Undying by Barker? I don't think I have, or at least it, I have, it has not resonated with me enough for me to remember and say yes right off the bat. What type of liquid do you use to smooth the clay? Water is what I use. 
the, it is just H2O, this is tap water. Because this is water-based clay, so this is actually kind of breaking it down a little bit as we go. So the medium they use in, in wet clay is glycerin, right? Yes, glycerin is the added element in order to make it dry out slower. I will often use hand lotion on top of clay like this, which will do the same thing. That is two puppies fighting. I will not uh, uh, bow down to their terrorist threats and look at them, because that's all that they want in the world is attention. Yes, that is the puppy equivalent. Look at me, 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 look at me. Big Dog says, thanks for the great food at Monster Camp, and we will still take the brown puppy. Uh, Big Dog has, is greatly coveting Cheney. Well, Big Dog cannot have Cheney. I'm going to say, get in line. If, if, if you were to get a puppy, which I'm not saying you're going to get a puppy, would not be the one named after the guy who played the Wolfman, that's for sure. He's a fan favorite. Because the Wolfman... Is my favorite. Uh, Whether or not Cheney is my favorite <laughs> remains to be seen. I think your favorite is the one you're holding at the time. Yes, my favorite is the puppy in my arms. I okay. have to laugh. If that was my sweater sleeves, they would be a gray mess. Um, one of okay. So here's something. All right, if you look at my hands; they always have crap on them. But I noticed that I don't really get a lot of stuff on my shirt anymore like I used to. And I only noticed it because my wife has started watching master classes. And she'll watch, uh, some, like, Gordon Ramsay cook. And he's got nothing. His shirt is nothing. pristine. There's no, nothing on his shirt. No That's just because he knows what he's doing. And he has done it a lot. And he can avoid those little things. He makes he made pasta from scratch. No flour got on his blue shirt. Yeah. None. Uh, I, too, am made of Teflon. There Big you go. Dog says, okay, I'll take any of the puppies. Dead in Yard Haunt says, your puppy noise is scary. Hooray. Any plans to visit New Hampshire or Massachusetts this upcoming year? I'm sure you're aware, but I thought I recommended Count Orlock's Wax Museum in Salem. I did go. I've been to Count Orlock's. I love that place. It is wonderful. Join Lake, will this be holding something or making a fist? Uh, it'll be, it, yes, it is making a fist in order to hold something. How do you get the sculpture smooth looking? I'm trying to look for myself and I can't seem to make it smooth. Well, the first thing that I did was I raked it with a multi-tooth tool. Uh, I happened to use a, uh, a piece of plastic with a lot of teeth in it. But even something like this which is twisted wire, twisted wire. See that wire twist on there? That's gonna leave little grooves. That'll take away the high spots and that will um, reveal low spots. And then you can fill in as you need to. And, but doing this leaves you with tool marks. And then once you have all these little tool marks and rake marks over it, then you're gonna be able to brush it down with water and just get that crystal clear. Haunted house. We will be doing cats, 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 zombies, mummies, clowns. It's outside, but it will be a lot of those uh, room mazes. Okay. Um, yeah, you have you have a, a big wide variety of things, um, and that happens normally when Stacy, when you have a a show that is a single destination show. If there's one attraction there, then they, they tend to squeeze in a little bit of everything. Um, but if you go to something like a haunt park that, where they have multiple attractions, then you might have an asylum, you know, a, a library or whatever. Ever heard of effects and makeup for animals? Where are they? They're under the table here. Have I ever heard of what, honey? Effects, makeup, for animals. No, I have not. I did once airbrush a horse. So, but I have not done, I mean, I've seen the dogs in the movie uh, Resident Evil, 
those were cool. Okay, so what's happening when I make my fist? I'm looking at these lines. This line goes almost all the way up, right like that. Uh, this line here tucks back this way, but not all the way. And there's a like spiral of lines that happen right here. Can you make a skin looking texture using a plastic sheet, like a thick plastic sheet? Um, what normally the plastic sheet, if you see someone do sculpting, is they're going to put it in and that's going to lessen the tool marks that happen when you use a tool. So uh, you might see some of that as I do wrinkles here down the road. Uh, yes, it, it can be helpful in lessening your tool marks. I think it fell to the floor, your yellow tool. It did. And I would get it up, but I am fat. <laughs> so I'm not going to bend over and pick it up. It's just going to stay there. Think about what it's done. And now, you know, sometimes if you want a, a wrinkle and you want to stress a wrinkle, it's not just about taking away and knocking that those hard corners off. Sometimes you want to add a little bit in to make that little bit of fat really look pushed up. Are you going to put that fork knuckle in there? No. Uh, that was in the hand I've already sculpted. Last question. My, my my fourth knuckle is on my is on my pinky. See that there's an extra knuckle crease on that finger. Whereas on all the others, there's just those. Anyway. Are you going to stipple any skin texture on that? If not, great. But what would you use to put the skin texture on? Okay, so my super simple skin texture, because I want to match the face and the other two gloves, I'm just jabbing it with a wet brush. And that actually is giving me a decent skin texture. Uh, I'll do a close-up here after a while, but I'm still putting in lines and things on this. So I'm, I'm nowhere near skin texture yet, but it will happen. I will get to skin texture. Most of the masks that I do, I don't have any eyes sculpted into it. I use the actor's eyes when I'm making a mask. The hunchback head happens to not be a mask. It happens to be a puppet head. So it has eye forms in it. And those eye forms are a... Christmas ornament and a ping pong ball. Bill Borg, does it bother you if I just touch the eyeball like this? <laughs> does that weird you out any? Well, I just wanted to know. No particular reason. Uh, and these fingernails are kind of hard to get to, so I can't press them in like I normally do. I've got to kind of push them in with a tool. and just work on shaping them. Now this clay is actually kind of wet, just fresh out of a bag, so I'm not necessarily thrilled with uh, how well it's going to hold lines for me right now. And I think that these knuckles could be built up a little more, so I'm going to put a little ball of clay on each one of those. But a very small amount. It doesn't need a lot of clay to make a big difference in the pointiness of that knuckle. The pointiness? The pointiness. Pointiness. I'm 
where would the point of that knuckle be? Right on the end. I'm constantly looking at my own hand. I'm putting my hand in that shape. And then I'm using my hand as a reference. So everything that I do lines up biologically and makes sense. Even though this is a very fantastic creature, he's going to be doing some crazy things. He'll be holding a dead cat and, you know, part of a, uh, a very fantasy-based world. But I'm still basing my sculpture in realism, so it's believable and it resonates as something you might see in nature. So my sculpture is actually so wet right now. I'm gonna, I, no, and that's because I, I brushed it out with water, you know? I added water to this clay, so yeah, it's a little wetter than it normally should be. But I'm gonna grab a paper towel and just towel it off. I'm use that paper towel to absorb moisture. Right now it is moister than a moister. pile of flesh. Moister than moister? I'll see you at Transworld in St. Louis. And I would like a Frankenstein mask to paint it, please. It's a little too cold here to work in the garage and play and paint. That is a big problem. Um, I have, uh, I'm bringing Frankenstein. I'm bringing like a whole Frankenstein character. So I will work very hard to try and get a Frankenstein mask finished in time. I don't think it'll be a problem. I just gotta pour up an extra. So when will you start the marathon of leprechaun masks? Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do a bunch of leprechaun masks this year. Only if I get orders. Uh, last year I did not advertise at all for leprechaun masks and I think I sold 12. Um, so if I don't advertise, then people don't remember, you know. If you were to sculpt a human head, what would you use for the eyes? Would you just sculpt the eyes? I would just sculpt the eyes. It's infinity gauntlet. Love would be It does look a little infinity gauntlet-ish. Zombie Thanos. Zombie is there a simple way to paint facade walls? I see them of all black, brown, and some highlights. Is that a good way to do a lot of facade walls? Uh, it depends on your theme. So you want your walls to reflect your theme. Your walls are something that your guests see the most. So they should reflect the theme that you're going for. So um, I'm not a fan of black walls. It's very rare that I paint a wall black and leave it. I believe in a uh, walls that have a just kind of almost a more neutral base color, but dark, you know, uh, like a like a nice brown, but don't make it even. You can even model that, you know, so it's not a uh, you can even model that color so it's not a solid brown. See, and this is actually doing a really good job of uh, getting that excess moisture off of this sculpture. These are blue shop towels. I like them because they don't have a pattern in them. They're just plain. You, can, you know, if I if I if it had flowers stamped into it, then when I pulled it off, I'd have a flower etched into it. And I don't want that. All right, so I'm, I'm really getting there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put some big veins on. Just like I did yesterday, I'm just gonna kind of take my loop tool Nice vein on the back of the hand. Everybody loves that. What? Big crowd pleaser. Yeah. Yeah, they line up for big hand veins. <laughs> what they say about a man with big hand veins. Terrible circulation. Yeah. <laughs> Poorly fitting gloves. And that looks ridiculous right now. 
Uh, and it may when I'm finished, who knows? Uh, but I'd like to think that I'm going to fix it. Now that that's laid on there, I grab a tool and I'm just going to go in all around it. It's going to be our improv class title. Don't be afraid to look at this. All right. I put things on bigger than I want them to be, and then I calm them down. Calm down. Don't be so cray cray. Be reasonable. Let me explain. Squeeze puppers. <laughs> My favorite thing for puppies to do is pee outside. Yes. <laughs> Bill is concerned about your mental health. About my mental health? Yes. If he's listening to what I say as I ramble, then it's, he should be concerned. Well, thanks for the info. I'm actually going to start sculpting clay. I was going to make a dummy head, but I need more of a drawing before sculpting. <laughs> Uh, you don't. Uh, you need visual reference. It doesn't have to be a drawing. Your visual reference can come from printed out internet pictures. Normally, what I do is I'll make a uh, a whole folder full of images. You know, uh, I, big dog. If you are still watching, I have a question for you. Is it a different experience watching this after Monster Camp, or do you feel the same watching it? as before Monster Camp. I'm sure you innately understand the problem a little more because you've done it. Uh, Big Dog was at one of my uh, Monster Camps, the most recent one, and uh, he made a really awesome orc mask. And so did his lovely wife. If you put your light on the sculpture, will it dry out the clay? Yes, as uh, dry out means to lose moisture and Putting the light on it will warm it up, which makes moisture evaporate. Big Dog says, I change my walls every thing for my home font. Uh, oh, and whoever asked about walls. Um, that's that, the, the walls is a gentleman who asked earlier about themes. The haunt themes and advice on starting a haunt. I, uh, I have a YouTube channel which you're watching right now. And if you look up scenic painting, I have about 10 videos on painting wall panels for haunts. Wow, those veins. <laughs> Them veins, though. You forget his blood pressure check. Yeah, and see, and now that's just married in and smooth. Now I'm going to go in and remove even more in order for these, these veins to look a little more realistic. Because your veins will dive down below the surface of the skin sometimes. And I want to reflect that. Because uh, you know, they're not all at the same depth all the way across. My puppies are insane. All I have to say about that. Big Dog says, yes, I feel that going to camp makes me understand better and how I can get better. Big Dog, have you sculpted anything since camp? I've never sculpted a thing. Can I still come to Monster Camp or should I try it home first? Absolutely, come to Monster Camp. If you were going to make a bomb, would you rather make one at home or would you rather do it in the presence of a professional? So comforting. Have you ever worked with monster clay or plastic? This is monster clay. Yes, I work with monster clay on occasion. Oh, sometimes what I do is, but I didn't want to overcomplicate this. This is a big rubber glove full of monster clay. It's been melted down in a crock. And 
I filled this rubber glove with monster clay. And what I do when I need to sculpt a set of gloves sometimes is I'll put this in hot water and then I can pose and bend these fingers any way that I want and I can peel or cut off the glove and then I'll do my water-based clay sculpt on top of this but I, I don't have to do all this build-up that I had to do this time. You know? I don't have to do all the build-up I did here. Imagine how much faster this would go if I just had to do uh, on top of a existing piece. But see how hard this is? Like that's hard. This is, monster clay is tough. Um, and this is very soft. So, colder weather means harder, firmer clay. And so that means slower speed. And I like me some speed when I'm doing things. You know, um, fast is one of my mantras. They, uh, it's a matter of personal pride that everything I make is fairly good. It is the style in which I work that everything I make is fairly fast. Sadly, that means it is not going to be very cheap. Because, you know, good, fast, and cheap can only... I want you to know that my wife has just scolded the dogs because they're being loud and I'm on YouTube Live. So... There you go. And then you, now you can see the Puppy 500 as they run some laps and move around the shop. Oh. So. It is the Puppy 500. You can't all go to the same night. They're like, you don't know that. Oh. Okay. So and I, I pared down some of this. I see a little more I'm going to take out. I just, I just don't, I don't, I think this one's too veiny, too thick. Where is Monster Camp and how long is it? What is the cost? Monster Camp is in Quinlan, Texas, which is where I am right now, um, which is about 45 minutes to an hour away from Dallas, Texas. And um, the cost of Monster Camp, it's three days, it's Friday, it's Saturday, it's Sunday. We feed you the whole time that you're here. You're, it's not easy, okay? You're here. It's like 12-hour You're really working your butt off when you're here. Um, and Monster Camp is 550 bucks. When you leave, you get the sculpting head form bust for you to make more masks on your own. You get, um, you get an apron. You get sculpting tools. You get the head form bust. Um, and you, you take your mask mold with you. You take your mask with you. So you leave with a finished mask. And you leave with all the things you need, except for clay and plaster, to make more masks. And now I brush this out again if I can find my brush. Where do you get your clay from? What type is it? I can usually only find water-based clay, and it's like 10 pounds. I use water-based clay, so that's what I'm using right now. And uh, I get mine from Giddy Mold Supply because they're kind of local to me. Um, you, it, you, I highly recommend you find a ceramic supply store near you, and that is where you get your clay from. That would be excellent, because that's going to be the cheapest way to do it. It's too cold, Big Dog says, it's too cold here. I want to do it in the garage. I have vendors lined up for clay. They will get some new way that is not molding, and with some Ultra Cal 30 in Ohio, it's cheaper there. I will send you the price cheaper. That's the big dog answer. Cool. Apparently the moldy thing on wet clay is not the end of the world. No, no. It, it's, I mean, it depends on the person. Uh, every now and then I'll pull out a bag of clay and it's got mold on it. I open it up, I spray it down with a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of bleach, um, and then it, it's perfectly fine and it doesn't even mold again. It won't get mold again. Um, yeah. I don't have the knuckle, uh, knuckle lines in this guy yet. But it's looking rather fisty, I dare say. Stacy, don't laugh. It's too late. That's an art term. 
does not need to take it in. There's a nice big old ham hockey fist and hand. That is exactly how I want it. Texture is very important when you're sculpting. You want to make different things that are made of different materials. Uh, you want them to be different textures. So I'm going to go in and I'm, I'm doing this texture over everything. Then I go in and I'm going to smooth down the fingernails because they're not going to have a skin texture on them. They're not going to have this brushed up, fuzzier texture. They're going to be smooth. So that is... Um, Clay is kind of like dough. It's a very doughy substance. So one of the biggest challenges that we have is keeping what we sculpt to look like it's made out of um, dough. I don't want it to look like it's made out of dough. How am I on comments, honey? Looks like crap when I'm done. Can I have one of yours? <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it looks like crap, then you're not done. Uh, most of mine look like crap somewhere in the middle. And the difference between a good sculptor and an amateur sculptor is a good sculptor keeps going. When, uh, when I look at someone's sculpt and I see process pictures of someone like Jordi Shell or Andrew Freeman, what happens most that I say is I say, Oh, I would have stopped right there. And they kept going. And that's what made it amazing. You're not, you're not working on it long enough and giving it enough time to become amazing. I have the loudest dogs on the planet. Every newspaper plays similar to Stalloween's recipe. Uh, no. Uh, I don't use paper clay. I do not use paper clay because I am too impatient. I want it finished right now. I don't want to finish it and then have to wait four days for it to dry. Like, I'm going to sculpt this today. I'm going to mold this tomorrow. I'm going to clean it out tomorrow. And I'll be pouring this sucker up by Saturday. Clay to rot? Uh, yes, clay. Well, uh, no, clay can't rot. Clay will get moldy. Um, this is, it's mud. This is clay is mined and farmed from the bottom of a riverbed, you know, all over the country. So, yeah. Oh no, again. Just a little. Let's go. Well. The puppies have been ejected from the game. They're getting a three-minute uh, time in the penalty box. Is that like puppy? Like puppy yeah. Ball? For high sticking. Uh, or high legging. High legging. Uh, got too excited. Okay. Yeah, this is my life now. You're a father. I never had children. You now. Because I'm, well, frankly, I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, and also, I was aware of, of my lifestyle and how being an artist, you may not, I might not be as uh, predictable of a life as, as I would want a child to have. So you got puppies. Yeah. Three, three and one time. Yeah, I got three puppies. Come on. Yeah. All right, so now I'm getting the knuckle lines in. And you start with the things that are the least amount of detail. And you go until you're putting in little tiny details. Um, that I'm bringing this whole sculpture into focus. Can you mix oil in the water-based clay to revive it? 
No. You can mix water in with the water-based clay. Water and oil do not mix. That's like a fundamental of science. Curious, do you have any Haunt Dogs merchandise? Yes, we do. Uh, haunt Dogs? No. I have, um, I have Stilpy Studios merchandise. We have t-shirts and hats. Um, honey, do we have anything else? We have aprons. Oh, no, Jeannie. Uh, we have aprons, hats, t-shirts. Yes, yeah. aprons, hats, and t-shirts. And my wife is about to um, tell a story here in a moment. Because Mr. Hops has an endeavor that he must embark upon <laughs> in the restaurant. Let's see. Tell, what's, what's a good story? I'm well known for my subtlety. <laughs> Story. Let me think. No. No. Oh. And how it works is that uh, my wife will come and tell a story while the camera is pointed at the sculpture. She will not appear on camera, <laughs> but you will hear her disembodied voice. It's not as creepy as it sounds. It's not creepy. It's just story time, guys. Story time. It's I'm story time. I'm trying to think of a, of a, what's a current story? Something that's happened recently that's amusing or interesting. So, so much happens around here. So well, much happens. now I think you've had plenty of time okay. to think about it. I do. I do. I'm going to go out walk over to the house and that'll get the puppies to walk around outside of it too. Yeah, they got excited and made a puddle. Made a puddle. So let's let's find a good angle of the current sculpture. There we go. My wife will break the silence by telling a story. <laughs> It would be good for me to tell a story that doesn't have nudity. All the stories, <laughs> all the stories I tell, always seem to involve nudity and okay. and Alan. So I don't really and do. I don't mean that until I started listening to okay. to playbacks and realizing that you know that's there was a theme here and you know guys hate clothes so this is <laughs> he's he's no it's different true. he's no different. Uh, anyway, uh, just a quick review on some interesting things that happened at Monster Camp 4. Goodness, I was trying to remember what number we're on. Yeah, because we have five in April, and we're going to do six. We're going to squeeze out one more in May of 2020, because looking at the calendar, there, if, we don't, if we don't double up and do one in May, there will be no chance to do one again until the following spring. So literally, it was just, okay, we're just going to go for it but you never know what some of the challenges are going to be with with each monster camp each one presents a different challenge this one we had gosh three weeks ago yeah. was it three weeks ago okay three weeks ago monster camp four our challenge uh besides the fact that we had just rescued three uh eight week old puppies <laughs> days before who does that yeah, yeah i know and then uh, we we had that that chaos so we're very sleep deprived um, but what we had was was weather challenge there's nothing you can do about that so we had the challenge of when Friday it was foggy and damp when everyone arrived and everyone spends the entire day in the shop on Friday and, and they only step outside to smoke or just to take a moment to catch their breath if they need to but other than that it's in the shop all day Friday it does not end and then Saturday we actually had sun for about an hour, and then it clouded up, and a cold front came through, and we had a tornado watch. Now, that's nothing new in, in where we are, because we're in Tornado Alley. So, we get tornadoes, but where we are in the country, there is no civil defense siren that is going to uh, warn people. So, we're in the first 24 hours, we have mist and fog. The next 24 hours, we have sun and then thunderstorms heavy rain, 
and a tornado watch. So while everyone was in here working, I was watching the radar because there was simply a good chance that if we, I saw any kind of rotation in clouds, I was going to have to bring everybody into the house and put them in the hallway. And our house is built kind of like a fort. So that was the safest place to be. But we're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like we have a shelter to go to. You're going to come in the house. Fortunately, that didn't happen, but we were under a tornado watch. The next morning, the bottom dropped out, and we had freezing weather and snow. <laughs> and then by the end of the day, it was sunny. No, we didn't have a lot of snow. We had like five flakes. Uh, we, we had, we had a Texas nice snow. dusting of snow, but it was ironic that we started with a muggy, warm day on Friday, then rain, thunderstorms, tornado watch on Saturday, Arctic cold front and snow flurries on Sunday, and then ending up with sun. And so we Texans who were here were like, yeah, whatever. Non-Texans might have thought it was unusual. It's Maybe not. Californians. Maybe not. not. Yeah, we did have a couple from California. Yeah, Californians are not used to weather. So, like, wait, what is this? So that was a challenge. But it all worked out. And uh, it was an absolutely great camp. And so we are going to try and squeeze one more in for May because April is already sold out. And then we have Trans World Orders, MHC, a Renaissance Festival, some labs we're going to host, training season where we, we are going to different haunts to train, and then Halloween. So hold on to something. Here we go. Hope to see you guys at Trans World. Take it away, Alan. If anybody is upset that they wanted a story and got a weather report, you can uh, email stiltbestudios at gmail.com and, uh, and give that feedback. Do you not like my story? My, my wife. Oh, my wife. I'm glad my wife doesn't know exactly what's on camera because now she doesn't know if she can hit me or not. I, what, was, what was with my story? Yeah. It's either that or it's another story about you naked, and I think they're tired of naked stories. Well, all we talk about great, is honey. Here come the comments. Your nudity. Why not? We talked about a water buffalo. So we might as well it wasn't my water buffalo. It was Carl's water buffalo. That was horrific enough. I want a little more definition uh, there. All right. Nudity, the coyotes. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. What the hell made you decide to take on three great Pyrenees at one time? Well, they were cute. <laughs> <laughs> that is how many hard luck stories start. <laughs> Let me help tell you how attractive this person was or whatever. Well, it was puppies. And how are you supposed to choose? Yeah. I had to pick. I, had to, I was going to pick two puppies. There were five puppies, and the guy said, well, I'm going to keep two. And I said, well, I'll just take the other three. Very easy to say that you're going to take three puppies. And I, I recently just took all three puppies to the vet by myself, and I am never doing that again. That was mass hysteria and chaos. They're not leash trained, so they're all trying to run backwards while doing the worm. Um, not and, and like not even like the same direction backwards, just away from the leash and collar. Uh, they were not fans. That did not go well. One was, you know, and then the the vet's assistant who was trying to help me, who uh, I hated. She ex she she was not having an easy time either. She actually closed the door on Cheney's paw. Oh uh, no! So he started whining. And he was the one that was furthest inside. So that made all of them think, oh, well, bad crap is happening in there. And then they all start whining and screaming uh, and, and trying to run away. It was not a good scene. It was not fun. I'm never taking the puppies to the vet alone again. I will have backup. You were, you were mad. I was very mad. I did not I did not call her a stupid cow Too while she was there. Really yeah. And I may have looked at her in the tone oh, of stupid I'm sure cow. You did. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure I have very I have very so expressive well. green eyes. Stacey, if we had Big Dog says they are so cute, and the brown I like the best gets great love. That's Cheney. They is, are. He is a sweetheart. Let's see. Uh, uh, Josie. Josie. I 
Um, yeah, so I went outside, right? And you know that the dogs, dogs stayed in for a little while? Well, I go outside and I start whistling for the dogs. And three cats come running out of the darkness. Aww. Doyle, Jonesy, and Jenkins. They were apparently running. Um, everything, every item is a LARP item if you're brave enough. Um, but, but I make a lot of masks. So I have sold orc masks and goblin masks and things to people who were LARPers. And they were going to start like an orc clan or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I have, in a manner, in a, in a way. My stuff is meant for haunting, but that means it's durable enough for LARPing. LARPing is not as popular in the States as it is in, in Europe, uh, which is a tragedy, in all honesty, uh, because, well, I would make a lot more money. Um, and it would just be fun to do, because I love sword fighting, and I love, you know, a lot of the things that LARP has to do with. Did you see they renewed the quest? No, I did not. Some years. Now it's going to be focused around teenagers instead of adults, but it's coming back. How dare they? How dare they get something cool to teenagers? Hey, Jonesy. Those people foods. Honey, is Jonesy going after Josh. food? Hey. <laughs> God, these animals are making me ginger. Did Jonesy just try and steal off the table? He did. Well, he's not in the house. He doesn't know that, you know, in here that food's off limits. <laughs> my darlings, my darlings. Okay, okay, well, why don't you jump off the table? Right? My wife is a little so indulgent with our pets. Oh, that's so unfair. <laughs> it's true. That looks like I just want to play with it. It's so bad. so bad. Yes, uh, one of our puppies, Bella, she wants, she wants a cat cake. of her very own. She is enamored with cats and she is enthralled with the cats. It wants and so bad. The, uh, the cats want to throw her in a river. They're not reciprocating this love. But at Jonesy least now they do tolerate words. presence. Jonesy, you chunk. <laughs> and I've got to clean up some down here. I don't have a nice finished edge. And once I get this vein put on, I will uh, grab the other hand. I want to put them next to each other. It's a little side by side comparison. Hey, bud. What's your favorite movie monster? Well, <laughs> all right. What did you ask? In Clash of the Titans, um, Medusa is, of course, lovely. Uh, I love Medusa, of course. I love the Kraken. Those are the big two when you think about Clash of the Titans. But there's just something awesome about uh, the scorpions that spring up from Medusa's blood. They're stop motion animated, and they just look really cool. And Calibus, who is one of my favorite characters, um, who I think he's the son of Hera, but anyway, he's out to uh, put the hurt on Perseus because he was cursed, kind of, because of per Perseus. In the same way that the Joker blames Batman for his issues. Unless you have watched the new Joker, which is sad and has nothing to do with Batman. Are we talking the old one, the claymation owl? That clockwork owl was my favorite growing up. Yes, TikTok. Wait. Isn't that from the no. yeah. Return to Oz? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what is his name? Bubo. Bilbo, Bubo, Boo Boo, uh, Ubu, <laughs> Ubu, Boo Boo. I don't know. Beboop, Beboop the owl. 
not the Ninja Turtle villain. But anyway, those scorpions that they fight, it's a beautiful fight scene. happens on the beach at night or on a gra gravelly area at night. It's just really nice. It's well done. Bubo. Bubo? I got there almost. I was really close. So now you hear cats. Uh, welcome to our zoo. Hey, when everybody is in here, the animals want to come in here. If it's just me sculpting away, it's they okay. don't care. It's okay, Chance. Who picked out the puppies' names? I named all of the puppies. I did not even <laughs> consult my wife. I'm like, here are their names. She said something like, this one should be named Mr. T. This oh one should God, be. I this one should that. be named Alf, and I'm like, no, you don't have the reins anymore, wife. Oh my I am naming them, and I That's named them nice. Bella, I, Boris, and Cheney. I suggested Harry Hauser to call him Harry. You did. You did. That's not. That's not a bad idea. Speaking of Claymation, she had that. But yeah, um, Harry Hauser has this whole menagerie of wonderful beasts. The Minotaur, I think, from the Golden Voyage of Sinbad, is another one of my favorite creatures. Just really cool. It looks like a 15-foot tall pro wrestler with a bull head. Made of metal. You gotta like that. Alright, so I have lines in here now. Uh, I have big vein of forums. And I'm gonna work on cleaning up the bottom of this a little bit. And I want everything to look like it's on purpose. That's what I'm doing right now. As I'm going around here at the bottom, and just, it's the bottom. It's against the board. So there's little bits and things that don't look like uh, they should, you know. Yeah, I got a lot of flack, honey, on the Internet today for starting that video with the hand mostly sculpted. So that is why I had to come on tonight and do one from scratch. So yesterday was hand sculpting part medium middle. Today oh, sorry, is hand sculpting one through the end. Because I'm really close to wrapping this up. Alexa, what time is it? It's 8.57 p.m. Stacy. Hope you enjoyed your Thursday. How goes your sewing? Good. It's a lot better when I don't have to pick things up. Okay. Uh, the Miss Rock Stacy, you're revealing secrets on a YouTube video. Oh. Um, oh, 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 oh. How's the Nosferatu coat coming? It's coming along well. Great. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that one was a secret. It's not. I, I don't have secrets. I was going to say secrets. You have to tell me these things beforehand. What are Okay, and again, I'm just cleaning up that bottom area. I've got the dirty bottom. Now I go in with this brush and I do the stabby stab, and that gives me a texture. All right, I feel pretty good about this. Let me spin it. By spinning it and putting light on different directions, I'm seeing different planes and facets, and I'm finding out, you know, what areas need more work. Now, see, this is a brush that had paint dry on it, so it's a stiffer brush. Well, these areas of clay that are harder, I need a stiffer brush to affect the clay in the same way as the smooth brush affects the clay. <laughs> oh my god. Doyle just came in. 
That is not, it's very uncommon for all the cats to come in like this. But there's, there's people, there's me and Shannon are both here. None of us are at the house, you know. So they probably went over the house. We're like, what's going on? Where is everybody? Cars are here. And then, you know, came over. So I'm going to look at this critically. I'm shaking my head like an Etch-a-Sketch so that I can look at this as if I were looking at it for the first time. And I see that I'm missing some little, there's some little, like, in between each of my fingers is a little crotch. You see? And that, that crotch has a, a form. So I'm going to give these finger crotches to the hand. Yes. Hey, Doyle. Doyle. What product would you need to make a resin-made skull? Read the question again. What product would you use to make a mold of a resin-made skull? Okay, if I want to make a skull out of resin, I would mold in silicone, and then I would uh, pour it up in resin. I would probably still just use water-based clay, just like this. So here you can see uh, Doyle has come to visit. Doyle is one of my uh, buddy cats. Hello, how are you? Uh, sometimes Doyle requires affection and he is vocal about it and he will not let me like stop until I give him affection. Right now he's actually pretty chill. Well, he was pretty chill. I think he thinks he knows this is a hand, so he wants to rub up against it. <laughs> that means the sculpt is good, I guess. But this is Doyle. Uh, I'm just trying to get things done, and uh, here's my cat. All right. So. <laughs> Doyle is looking for the ultra cow. <laughs> well, it's over there. How's it going, bud? I apologize for this break at our usual programming uh, because there is a kitten here who is in need. That's, that's your tail on my sculpture. Oh, so Doyle also loves to be held like a baby, just like this. Ooh, he loves it. And his head just flips back and his eyes close. He, uh, he likes to be held. Baby. Right now he's also looking for puppies. Oh. Wondering where puppies yeah, are. you to amuse these animals. Uh, this is quite frankly I'm amazed there's two cats taken. Because that does not happen. Hey, Hi. Oh, you know it's like already see one. Hi, lady. Okay. Oh, no. Again, I'm just adding some wrinkles. To apologize for giving a fur baby some love. Who said that? That was Cat Swift. Well. Use your words. Yeah, can't understand. Speak English. Uh, you know what? If any of my pets are going to learn to speak English, it's going to be Doyle. Yeah. Alexa, can you bark like a dog? Okay, here's Big Bark. 
Do you want to hear another? No. Yes. Alexa, stop. You're just going to cause more. Goodbye, my human friend. I'm causing some drama here in the shop. That's Jones. Jones wins the least thrilled prize. He is the least thrilled that we brought home the puppies. That's all right. Oh my goodness. Oh, I know. It's terrible. Doing a little bit of refining and defining of these fingers. And in between the fingers. And that means I'm going to have, I done, I made a little trench, so now I have to knock the edges off of it. I want to re-round out those fingers. I flattened the sides. <laughs> we can't nest here. I need to sew these things. Stacy, I appreciate you entertaining Doyle so I get some work done. <laughs> None of my cats have that whole belly trap thing. Oh. They they really love to have their belly scratched. Yeah, you do. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, so I'm getting very happy with this hand. If I had a dollar. Um, and now I am How late are you going? putting that, t what time is it now? Well, I'm about to be done sculpting this hand, and I think when I finish this, it's a good place to stop the video. Yeah. Because, because, because well, I said I was going to do this, and I did this. And once it's done, it's done. All right. So let's look at this hand again. Um, and then I'm going to put it next to the other one, or put the other one over here next to it. I'm pretty happy with this. This is uh, that's a natural pose. Right there, I'm happy with the pose of the hand. Uh, I'm happy with the angle. Uh, I like the flatness of the knuckles up here. My, my knuckles are pretty flat up here. So that's good. Yeah, I'm happy with this. So let me leave this one here. This is my left. So I'll put it over here, and I'll bring over the right. Bones Jones. Bones Jones. I was going to get this done. <laughs> I got distracted. So here is the other hand. I think the sizes are good. They look like a set to me. I can see that they are a set of hands. Uh, they're kind of a matched pair. I like that. So that's that. That makes me happy. The hunchback is sculpted. Yay. His head is done. That's right here. Both his hands are done. So he'll be molded here. Maybe I'll mold one of them tomorrow. A lot of molding to do. A lot of, a lot of things ready to go. That's yes. Exciting. You do those hands and two piece molds. Yeah. So maybe I'll go live tomorrow and mold up uh, one of those hands and just show you guys that process. So thank you guys for hanging out tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, it took me an hour and a half to sculpt to completion a uh, a hand right over there. Um. No, uh, your fingers always look longer when they're on a fist, simply because you're, they're, they're curled and it looks like it. But this looks like it's all part of the finger. But really, this is the top part of the hand. 
it's from here is where those knuckles are. So that's where it bends. So on the back side, when this bends, it they look longer, but they're not. This was yeah, I've measured fairly well, but yeah, uh, very happy with uh, how this turns out. So I said I was going to curl these fingers, so it's a more easier to wear, more easier. It's an easier to wear glove. Just a nice little, okay, and here is what's happening is as I bend these, I'm getting little cracks along the back of the fingers here. That's because bent, it looks longer, you know what I mean? So as I bend these fingers forward, this has to stretch, and it's play, so it's not stretching well, but that's okay. Let's patch the cracks. And I'll put in more texture. But I wanted those fingers bent a little bit more to help hold the glove on. Just going in here, fixing those little cracks that I just made. And I will tap that texture back into that fresh clay. It's fresh clay, so I'm using the soft brush. All right, and now that hand has a bit more, instead of straight up, it's a little more like this. So that's going to keep the glove from just falling off the hand. All right, that's it. We did it. Uh, Stacy, say goodnight. Good night. Wife, say goodnight. Good night. And go make stuff. Thanks for watching.